development team. So this class is for those who have taken the business analysis class and they've done the user requirements, they've written the business use case, they've drawn the the wireframes, they have the customer journey map, the process flow and everything. So they have developed the business case for the sponsor and now the product has been approved and has been shipped, shipped to the development team. So let's talk about the development team. The development team includes the UI UX guys, the backend developers, testers, solution architects, the business analysts, and according to the Scrum guide, they shouldn't be less than three and more than nine. It's actually a question in the Scrum, the professional Scrum master. So let's talk about the UI designers. The UI designers are the guys that bring life to your wireframe. So the wireframe is just like a skeleton, just like our skeleton is to human beings. So wireframe is like a skeletal framework. You have an idea of how your website wants to look like or an application or let's say a digital product wants to, looks like but you do not know how the right how to combine the right colors you have to put the logo you have to put the 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 icons how the look and the feel so that's what that's what the ui developers rule is so it, what according to what i wrote here it, what it does is to translate the creative software design and bring reality to the idea so this is an example of how a user interface looks like for this is if you use microsoft's laptop this is how it looks like then for the user experience, the user experience guys are not just the graphics, the user interface. What they think about is the user flow. What steps do they think? They are more intuitive. They, they, they are more strategic. They do not just put the logo. They do not just put an icon anywhere. They are thinking about what the, pro what the problem of the customer or the visitor visiting the website or the application is what problem does he want us to solve for him that's the kind of problem they are thinking about what tasks do they need to complete how straightforward is the experience is the website user friendly if it is not user friendly then there's a problem so there is a thing about the user the user experience guys and the user the ui and the ux so you can either be a ui person or a ux person so or you can be both if you are both then it means you are called a front-end developer so like i said the ux person is more intuitive it talks to the business analyst the visual designers and the prototype it is basically about solving a problem and not and not just you know coming up with a an aesthetically beautiful website so the to bring the the designs to life they have to use the html and then also javascript framework which is why they are called front-end developers so after the front-end developers are done with their work then the back-end developers take over or they work hand in hand so the back-end developers are the real coders they run the website the users don't see it or interact with every application or the or websites have a back-end developer let's say for instance you have a website and you enter your details where does the detail go in where does the email the user information the customer information go to that's the work of the back-end developer the their responsibilities include database creation so like i said you're a customer, you fill in all your information, your birthday, the, 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 yeah, if you're ordering the clothes, the type of clothes you want, the color you want, and everything you want. Where does the information go to? It's the database, the database. So the backend developers create the database, the, the server, the API integration, which I'll be talking about later, the content management development, guys. So this is basically how it looks like. You are the user, here you are looking at the websites but the the, the back end guys are working here they are actually working here so one can actually be a front end person and back end person 
So if you fall into that case, it means that you would be termed a full stack developer. So let's talk about int integration. For those who took the business analysis class, we the product we came up was a digital product for an agricultural firm. So let's say the product wants to eat the farm, which is Finacle and Hook. They currently have an HR system on standing on its own, but they would like to integrate it into the new product. How does that work? Which is why we'll be talking about integration. And you know, it's about fixing everything together and making everything talk to each other it has to be compatible that is one of the that is one of the role of a backend developer so let's talk about size of application there is a customer relationship management the human resource the enterprise resource planning the supply chain management so let's talk about customer relationship management the customer relationship management is an application that covers a 360 degree view of a customer from marketing, from when you start talking about the brand to social, trying to measure and monitor their social footprint online, not just on Instagram, but on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, big, 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 bigger application and bigger, sorry, bigger companies use a large, the bigger applications for it. They wouldn't, an Instagram would not suffice for social. They have to use like a very big application. It's called enterprise application that helps them monitor the social footprints of a client. There's also the knowledge. The knowledge is the let's say the frequently asked questions of a customer. So the knowledge system will be an example of when you could visit an Amazon, for instance, and you go to their frequently asked questions. That is also that falls under the customer relationship management and then also service the customer service department what application do they use so the customer relationship management captures the marketing social knowledge service and also sales the sales is also important and it's part of the customer relationship management let's talk about the human resource management application here i talk about i spoke about learning recruitment and compensation so for learning I mentioned this in class. I remember when I resumed in one of the places places I used to work with. All I had was my computer and my password. The learning application had everything I had to do. My manager was not on around, was not even in my country. It was not even in my in my domain at all. When you work in a technology company, you have like an umbrella, for instance. So your com your manager could be in Dubai or wherever he is, but they ensure that you learn everything you need to learn on the learning portal. That's part of the human resource management. So rather than spend money on training or various training, traveling here and there, all the trainings are online. Then there's also the recruitment. I'm sure you have, you know the ATS. The ATS something that helps people, that helps recruiters choose the right candidates with the with the key, right using the right keyword, and then then there's also compensation. So the the importance of all these application is basically to reduce is to improve automation and to reduce paperwork basically. So the enterprise resource planning also we talk about financials accounting analytics procurement application. So how do they measure, how do they monitor procurement in let's say um, a Pote and Gamble company, for example. They have various projects working hand in hand. How do they ensure that everything is going on safely? How do they monitor their finance and accounting? Also analytics, they need to, everything has to be measured. Also the supply chain management, is also an application. So a Pinnacle and Hook has a customer relationship management too. They, they are normal resource management. They hope to implement enterprise resource planning. How do they ensure that the, the applications stop together? This is where integration comes in. And we'll be talking about database. So databases use structured query language for writing and querying. 
this is um, where all the information is stored. The database analyst is also a team member on the development team. Most of the time, this is how the this is how their UI is usually like. I don't want to say boring, but I mean that's their that's their job and they love it. So API an API is an acronym for application programming interface. It's a software that allows two applications to talk, to talk together. So like I said earlier, a software developer would a software developer who is a backend developer would ensure he knows what an API is. So for this project, if you remember fairly during class, I said the backend developer had already designed the database and the API. So the, the backend developer is not the front end developer. There are two different people on this project. So what the front end developer guy asked for was the API and the API documentation. So you would know how to integrate everything that needs to be integrated together and then also know where to where to implement each other. So let's talk about server. So a server is a computer program or device that provides a service to another computer. So a server is where all the information is being stored and it's called a data center. Like some five, six years ago, the word cloud was introduced. Prior to then, it was basic, most the, the data centers were basically on-premise. Most organizations, a lot of organizations still use on-premise website. And this is how the data are stored. When you go to a data center, it has to be cool. It means that the AC has to be on. Electricity has to be constant in a place like Nigeria. It means that the generator has to be working 24-7 for an on-premise site. So to cut cost and of course technology improvement, the world cloud came into place. And rather than you keep your data on premise, that's on site, like in a particular location, they were like, okay, let's create a data center around the world so that people can share data centers and also will reduce cost because one of the disadvantages of having a data center on premise is that you have to ensure that you have to pay for security you have to pay for electricity you have to pay for for the ac to keep cooling you have to buy ac you need to have like a staff on ground constantly monitoring the devices and the structure you understand but when you go cloud it means that you do not stress yourself you just outsource the data center to the big to the big guys and who are these guys they are the they are the, the big player, players are oracle amazon web service microsoft azure and then the smaller ones which are not so popular so so for most organizations they can either decide to go hybrid by hybrid means that they can decide to share data center with other organizations so what they will be paying to the to the it firms are just you know payments for payments for managing the data or they can decide that no we are not sharing our data with anyone we're not sharing the data center with anyone we want to have full control over the data center even though it's in the cloud so licensing so pinnacle and log decides that okay rather than build these websites let's buy a ready-made um, application that will help us with our crowdfunding for instance or any digital product you have come up with the question one of the questions that the companies will ask for is how many subscribers are going to use our application the more the better for them because they'll be able to charge mainly based on application and also the payment structure these applications are not cheap at all especially enterprise applications they are not cheap you have to come up with payment, payment structures most people do not pay once they have to go through banks no matter how technology is very expensive and the very big ones are quite quite expensive so they built the application you need to test it a software tester is an individual that tests software for bugs errors before they go live 
this is the role of someone on the development team he ensures that there are no bugs imagine if you are on a website a, a, an apple website for instance and you click on a button and the button doesn't work that's that's a big problem for the company it means that you can't and you want to purchase for instance it means they've lost customer they've lost revenue things like that shouldn't happen or there's a there's a display error when you click on something or when you enter your information that is the job of the quality assurance the tester it's not so technical there are applications which you can use to test or you can also test manual it takes some time before they go live but the tester ensures that everything works perfectly well so that is what happens in the development team once everything once the build the product has been built they ship it back to the product owner who is in charge of the product and then the product owner goes to the to the sponsor to say okay here is your product here is the idea you have come up with it so that's basically about it thank you for your time